know, I want to ask my single brothers and sisters out there. Are you happy? Are you really happy? I'm curious. You know, back in the day when I was out there, man, my single meant something different than it means now in 2021. I really need some answers. As always, I brought the backup. You want to meet somebody who's happy to be single? Well, let's talk about it. Mentorship moments. Each one teach one. You know, let me give you uh, just a few stats and then we'll bring in my special guest. By the way, am I dressed like I'm single like back in the 90s? Ain't this how we used to do it? My friend, my buddy John got this for me. Hey, ain't nothing going on here. He just, this is, he wants to go bike riding one day. That's why I'm wearing this. All right. All right. I think it looks kind of fly. It's the sun god. You know what I'm saying? Hi, yeah, I like high karate. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Let's talk about, I'm curious. Okay. So um, let's see. We have 69% of Americans partnered. Okay, cool, right? And this is from the Pew Research Center because, you know, I like to be all official and stuff. And we have Sanders. Before we pan in, I got to read her bio, okay? And I'll read it in, in third person. She, she is a single life expert using her experience to teach other singles how to live their lives confidently. From around the age of 13 to 30 plus, she was going about dating life. 13? Oh, Lord. Going about dating uh, life all wrong. Her education, work life, and finances were pretty much on point, but her personal setback was wasting time embarrassing the wrong, uh, embarrassing the wrong people because she was made to feel as if she was being alone uh, was a tragedy. Wow, that's so deep. I hear so many women that uh, feel that way. Uh, this is a no judgment zone. We are not focusing on you to be married or to keep up with how many kids you have Instead, the focus is creating your own agenda, dispending, uh, dispelling uh, social myths, and redefining the word spinster. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest today, I told you I bring the heat, man. My guest today, and you know, a celebrity, all right? <laughs> the urban spinster herself, Miss Sadia Sanders. Sadia, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing <laughs> I mean, listen, you know, before we, uh, before we like really dive into it. And listen, I will give the number early because, you know, my people at home, my staff at home, that say you always forget. You want to call in to talk about this subject about being single? It's 323-815-4204. Uh, give us a brief background of your your upbringing. Because you, 13 to 30. Well, I wasn't I, dating at 13. Oh my God. Good <laughs> Lord. What no, was you doing? <laughs> I wasn't dating at 13. Oh, okay. give, Tell us about your, your upbringing. Where, where did we get to this point from start to finish? Your origin, your superhero origins. Talk my to superhero. me. Well, I <laughs> am from a two-parent home, so, okay. so that's good. But my parents did separate uh, for about seven years. I kept saying five years, but my dad reminded me after uh, the interview last week. He was like, no, it was seven. It wasn't five. But, <laughs> but, and, and we're talking about uh, 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 Fox Soul. Uh, we were both on. She was on the week prior to me, and I was on last night. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Continue. So, uh, they were separated for about seven years, and during that time, it was just my mom and I. And my mom is from the South, mm -hmm. so if you know anything about Southern people, the, the hospitality, but they're very people-pleasing, and they're very uh, in tune with other people's needs. So I grew up always thinking that I had to oblige myself to someone else if, if I cared about them, okay. whether it be a romantic relationship or a friendship or, or whatever. It, it was just that kind of giving environment, but I was not taught discernment. Now, wait a minute. Is I got to cut you off here because is it a South thing? What part of the South are you from? Well, your, my your, mother's your from Atlanta. Atlanta, okay. And my okay. dad's people are from Mississippi, so he, he's first generation Chicago. Okay, okay. And I was born in Chicago. All right, my piece were from Louisiana, from the South, too. And I find myself in life, my life at one time being a people person, too. I wonder if, if that was it. But I'm sorry, continue. Yeah. I because people pleasing and people person is two different things. People person is you're very social, 
uh, friendly, you can speak to anybody, very charismatic, but a people pleaser is someone who is always seeking to please the other person, putting that person's needs before your own. Well, do you find that problematic? Yes. Okay, why? why? Explain. <laughs> it's problematic because when you're putting someone else's needs before yours, you really don't get to find out what you like or don't like, what your boundaries are, because you're always seeking to get the approval okay. of someone else. So going back to uh, the Urban Spinster and, and how that came about, and I mentioned the 13 to 30 plus because I was boy crazy at one time. Okay, so that's fair. I right. was I was girl crazy. Right. Or something. So you know, like Fox Hills Mall, we going to the mall, <laughs> we getting on cue, we trying to get the numbers, and you know, doing all that kind of stuff. But I wasn't able to formally date until like about sixteen or so. Same here. But I always had to have a boyfriend because mm -hmm. that is the environment I was around. Everybody was like, "Well, well who are you talking to? Well, what boy are you going out with, or so on?" And that even transcends to, to today. Okay. If I go into a social event or a family gathering, Thanksgiving, Christmas, it doesn't matter what it is. So who are you with? So are you married yet? Well, what's going on? Well, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know? oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you get into all of that and you wind up choosing to be with people who you really shouldn't be in touch with at all or connected with at all, but because you, you hear, hear all those Things going on in your head. Well, okay, well, what's wrong with you? Well, you're too picky. Well, you need to give them a chance. Oh, girl, you can fix that. You know, okay. I can't fix people. And I could. I didn't find that out until I had gone through all of these bad relationships. And when you are single, that's really the time for reflection and trying to figure out, okay, well, what, what happened here? What's, what's the pattern? Why do I always find myself in, in these situations? Well, I've known you for a, while, a long time, you know, and I've known you as a very uh, fun but very serious and direct person. And and being and understanding the fact that you're single and happy when I discovered that and I said, man, I gotta have you on my show. <sighs> let's get let's clear the air right now. Was it the typical because you're bitter, you know, <laughs> bad relationships? Did somebody no. beat you or hurt you? Oh, you no, know, you know, no, I, no. I I mean, because you seem like a person of such confidence, man. And and I believe that like young women and men, they need to see that. What's the why? What what, what is this single thing about? You know? And see, I think that's, I think the misconception that I have to clear up with a lot of people. One, I don't hate men. Okay. <laughs> I, see, I wanted, I wanted I to make that clear. Because I, want... I have cousins who, as soon as I started talking about being single or talking about my past relationships, they saw it as male bashing. And at no point do I ever say or ever have said that I don't like men or you don't need a man. I've never said that out of my mouth. So I want to clear that up too. I'm not choosing to be single. This is just what it is. Mm -hmm. And instead of being uh, desperate or thirsty, as they say, wow. now, and getting on all the apps and trying to, you know, well, hook me up with your cousin. And, Tinder you know, and. Yeah, and all that kind of uh, stuff. And I have tried online dating. I hate it, by the way. Um, I'm just choosing to enjoy this time in my life. Now, if I meet someone, great. But I'm not just clamoring to to be partnered because when you do that you, you don't have the discernment you ignore the red flags because we our instincts are kicking in all the time but if you haven't been taught to really listen to your instincts and act on them or you've been made to feel bad because you act on your instincts you know immediately when someone's not right for you wow. and i have so many stories about well <laughs> about let me ask that. you that uh, uh, there's so many questions i want to ask you and then let's back up a little bit Let's talk about the dating side. Because back when I was single, excuse me, I'm, ooh, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Anyway, there's no mute button for that stuff. My bad. Excuse me. Anyway, when I was, when I was dating, we, we met at, at the mall. We mm -hmm, met at mm -hmm. grocery stores. Yeah. We met at church. Please tell me what it is about these single sites that you don't like. Because I have friends that swear by it. Please. I mean, you got to go in. Because I... I I'm curious. I, I'm, well, I'm married. It's just me. I'm, I've known people who have gotten married and divorced, but no. <laughs> no people who have gotten married on, on those uh, type of sites. But for me, I've always met the guys who were lying about either what they did, what they looked like back in the day. You know, when mm -hmm. let's put the old picture up from high school. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. When we, we were in college and we were fit and fine and, you know, you meet them and that's 40 pounds ago. You know, or they're not honest about, I met one guy online. I don't even know why he lied. He was married and had a baby on the way. 
and I knew, I mean, L.A. is big, but it's small. Right, right, right. So right. you have all Especially of these. Especially in black L.A. Oh, yeah. Black L.A. is very small. You went to high school, college, element, somebody knows somebody. Somebody knows somebody. Right. And then being in um, a sorority, I know a lot of fraternity guys and other Greeks. So all I have to do is ask, hey, do you know this guy? And that's what I did because wow. he was in a fraternity. He was throwing up his sign in the, in the profile picture, mind you. So I said, hey, do you know so-and-so? We had some mutual connections. So the guy that I asked was actually his fraternity brother. So he didn't want to rat him out. He just told me, but what what did he say to you? Where did he say he lived? And he said, you know, I, I'm not going to put all his business out there, but no, that's enough. Leave right. him alone. Right, right, right. And then moving forward, the guy, the same guy I had asked for the information, he comes out and tells me the business because now this guy's tried to talk to his cousin. And that pissed him off. So he was like, Man, come on now. Like he said, he's married, got a baby on the way. So I was like, this man is on a dating site, like a whole dating site. Well, let me ask you this because, listen, you know, come on, you former players back there that used to do it in person, they used to lie too. Are you saying it's easier to lie now with, with these dating sites? Well, if you don't do your research, okay, it's a lot easier because you can be talking before you actually see the person in person real life so because you, you're trying to be careful being single you want to be cautious about who you're meeting up with so you may keep it on the app for a while and then it goes to the phone and then you might meet them mm. so you could have spent a month or more just talking wow. that's time wasted mm. you know now not to say that if you met them in person like you said they you know they wouldn't lie and you find out okay. but there seems to be more of that Online And then some guys, even though it's one of those sites that are quote unquote for relationships versus the swipe left, swipe right. All they do is come at you with, with sexual conversation. Okay. Like immediately. Wow. <laughs> that doesn't, that, isn't that like just gross? I yes, mean, it's, it even, is. it's one thing to even like, you know, get all like, at, you know, act all freaky in person. At least you can say, Hey, I'm good, bro. You know, I, I, I know some strong women that know how to like <laughs> turn a brother down without hurting your feelings, but just online. It's either like all out, they, all of yeah. a sudden, here's a picture. What's going, on? What's going on? Right. And they don't care because they have the comfort of being in their own home. You know, they may take a little while to get to that point when you're talking in person. And, and let's not leave out the uh, uh, leave out the females. Y'all, <laughs> hey, man, y'all, I'm sorry. Y'all got some nasty females out there too, man. It, it, it's cray cray <laughs> out there. You know, I, I, if, I was, if I wasn't married, I'd be the male urban spinster. But I'd be the bitter one. I, 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 I swear, I, Eva, I'm telling you right now, babe, I'm, if after you, there is no more. I'll be a hermit for the rest of my life because I'm good. I see all the cray cray out there, so I'm good, you know. Yeah. But, and, but you're out there in it. But you're different because your single is different than the this, this single. And that's what makes it so interesting. Tell us about your version of single and what makes it so special. I think, again, my version is because I'm not chasing. Okay. Um, we have all of those uh, people who are telling us that there is something wrong if you're not married by 30 or they just assume you are. I have coworkers that don't know my personal life. They just look at the outside and they say, oh, I thought you were married with kids. Why? We never had that conversation, wow. you know, but that's the the box that people try to put you in to make your life make sense to them. Okay. And because I've made all those those bad choices and it cost me time and money in some cases and, and heartache, I have to follow my instinct. I was one of those people who would see the red flag and say, eh, maybe I'm tripping. Because I had the, you're too picky, you're too picky. You're right, right, right. <laughs> you know. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, well, let, let me see. Let me give him a chance. I love Avion Crockett has a, a new comedy special out right now. He talks about how the guys approach the ladies and the ladies are just so nice. And so, you know, oh, well, let me just see. We know immediately you ain't it, you know. But because we're so worried about dying old, you know, alone and, oh, I don't have any kids on my biological clock is ticking. I mean, and that's a real thing as far as, you know, you, if you want to have children mm -hmm. naturally. But there's all other ways that you can have children nowadays if you truly want to be a, a parent. I'm at that age where I, I do not want children. Um, the men I date, I'm okay with them having children, but I have some standards about that as well. I don't do a whole bunch of baby mamas. You know, I've been there, done that. Right, right. Oh, man. That, 
hey, I don't want to do that, you know. So you date. So like again, like it's confirmed, guys. Not bitter, not angry, just self confidence. Well, let me ask you this: How do you lead others? You know, you know. Let's talk about UrbanSpencer.com. I mean, because that that definitely is is a catch all. Reading your bio, how do you lead others to the confidence in that? How do you help people lose the bitterness with your walk? I think you have to try to get people to really do that reflection. Okay, what part did you play in this? Because it's not all, oh, these guys and they don't know what they want and they're players and all this kind of stuff. We have to take some kind of responsibility. Wow. I, I knew this was coming. See, I told you, <laughs> I, I, I know the best. All the people I know are credible and accountable. So, so accountability, talk about that. So for me, my accountability was, okay, now, were you bored when you picked up that phone and called this guy? <laughs> Or what was really going on with you? And that happened to me, I can say, at least three times, three occasions, where I met a guy, I knew from maybe the first or second date or phone call, we weren't compatible, but I'm sitting around not doing anything one day and say, you know what, let me let me see what Ronnie is doing. Right, right, <laughs> hey, right. And just out of boredom. You, out you, of boredom. You call poor Ronnie. <laughs> and then... <laughs> We have this wow. off again, on again, tumultuous <laughs> type of relationship where I didn't even have to go there. You right. know, and that's what causes the bitterness is when you're like, Well, this person wasted my time and he won this and blah blah blah. But you knew that over there. Mm, <laughs> mm. You know? And it, it's funny, I'm glad you're saying it because no matter how do I say this? No matter if it comes from a man, some kind of way, you know, from the purest attention, it's it's like victim bashing, you know. So I'm so glad that you said it because yeah. if I said it, I'm definitely gonna get an email <laughs> like, hey, you know, why are you blame victim blaming? Why are you blaming the victim? No, man. Hey, I gotta hold myself accountable for things, you know, as, as a male, as a human being too. So getting people to walk. So being single. What are the benefits to the urban spinster, Sadia Sander? Give us some benefits of, of, of in, in your walk, in confidence of what being single is about. From It's, it's so much more peaceful. Um, and I think that in itself is enough where you don't have to worry about arguing with anybody or uh, getting in, in situationships. Where I've dated a narcissist, I didn't even know he was a narcissist. Oh, at we the gotta time. talk about that. Now we don't don't say names because I don't, you know, because because once you you know trigger a narcissist, right. they they're trying to kill you the rest of your life. I don't want to beat up another narcissist in my life. Right. But I didn't even know what that was at at the time. So just having that peace of mind, and I was so proud of myself because a narcissist always will call you back. Yes, they yes. always come back around because they they have that need they're trying to to feed. And then we're so naive, we're thinking, oh, they just love me. They just couldn't get enough of me. And that, no, that has nothing to do with you. That's them and they're crazy. Wow. Um, but every two years or so, here's that text. Here's that phone call. And I got that text. I was driving down the street one day. And I'm like, and it always shocks me because it'll be years in between. So you don't expect it. Your guard is down. You know, so when I got up, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I blocked the number. And I was so proud of myself because had that been two, three years ago, I would have entertained the conversation and, oh, how you doing? Oh, well, we just catching up. And then that turns into now I'm back in the drama, mm, you mm. know, knowing that it's not going to last. He's going to get bored, get what he needs, whether that be time or attention or whatever. And then he's out. And then here I am picking up the pieces of my heart again. So mm -hmm. that's also what causes the, the bitterness that you spoke of. So I'm going to say a word and I want you to tell me what, what it means to you in your single stature. Freedom. Oh my God. It's wonderful. <laughs> now, you know, now, now tell our single ladies out there and men what it's like to be not, not uh, out there slaying and single, but out there in your confidence. What is it like being free? Free. Oh my goodness. It's, I think it gets worse for me as I get older because I don't want to give it up. <laughs> no, I Because understand. I can do whatever I want. I mean, I'm at that age where I'm starting to have hot flashes. Woo. I can turn the air up. I can turn it off. I can lay across the bed. I can I, do whatever I, I'm I want a victim to do. of the hot, hot flash burger. My wife, y'all, I'm blinking twice. Y'all need to help me. <laughs> hot flashes are no joke. I'm like, sorry. It's hot. Right. It's That's cold. Hot. It's hot, you know. But just those little type of things. I On my second home, I bought one home, sold it, bought another one. I didn't have to ask anybody's permission. If I want to paint the walls 
all blue, red, green, you know, it's, it's on me. But with that, and I, I just had a podcast episode about this because I'm seeing uh, more kind of single positivity uh, blogs and um, Instagram pages and things like that come up, but all they're promoting is the party. Mm. Oh, we can go party. We can have brunch. We can drink. We can be by the pool. But when you're single, you have freedom, but you also have all the responsibility. Okay. So it is not for the weak. You know, you can't be a damsel and think you're going to be single and ha- have it both ways. If, if you're going to be a, a damsel in distress looking for a captain to save you, then that comes with certain things. He's going to expect certain things of you. If he's calling all the shots, he's got all the money. Like, you know, we see the housewife culture and, and all of that kind of stuff. So being single and confident is also a lot of responsibility. Do you find that in your confidence in being single, uh, the up, there's an upgrade of suitors coming your way because I I no. found I no because <laughs> I because I, I was gonna say I I have always been in love with strong women I've I've dated weak women before but then when I met my wife I never met anybody more strong in my life she could take it or leave it I fell in love with her because she didn't need me she just wanted to be with me and that but she could drop me off which she did about three or four times in our relationship. <laughs> And I didn't like that, but it grew me up, you know? So you say no. Mm-mm. So, But the, see, what's weak, when you say you've dated weak women, what is what is a weak woman to you? Okay, I, um, I, I, I was going to say, I won't, I'll, I'll say her rhyme name. Uh, <laughs> we call, I, I, we, they call her, we call her Big Booty Bonita, right? You okay. know, so it's like, it, it, I was getting ready to go off to college, you know, and uh, the, the great, great girl, great family, you know, I mean, man, it was real. That was like my, like, like my real first, like like my first love, whatever, you know. But I started to mature and I started to go get ready to go to college. And uh, she had to go go away, you know, whatever, to another state. I don't want to get like into it too much because I don't want to give too much away, <laughs> you know, because we're, she's still a cool person. Uh, and then I met, I met Eva, you know. And the difference was, one was like, oh, you gonna go to college and 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 then you gonna take care of me, you know? Does that like it? Well, I work at McDonald's. Mm. For some reason, that that answer didn't <laughs> sit right with me. You know, I was like, you know, even mom was like, yeah, you know, you're going to. And then meeting Eva was a whole, that was a whole new level, you know, where she was like, um, you know, oh, my God, I'm bragging about my wife. Oh. <laughs> she was, she sat up straight. She was goal oriented. I don't even think she even cared, wasn't even looking for a relationship. Like I wasn't looking for relationships in college for another reason. But she just wasn't. She was just super duper focused. And there's something about that strength that made me want to do better if I wanted to get with this girl. You know, mm-hmm. I was like a D student in college. I raised my grade to a C plus just to stay halfway impressive. You know, if I missed the test, I was afraid to tell her because I thought she would drop me off. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of strength that that I like. But I, I guess you're saying, which I hear a lot of women are yeah. bitter about, is there are a lot of jokers out there, right? <laughs> yeah, or, or because there are so many women who, especially at a certain age, are just looking to latch on because they keep hearing, "You ain't getting no younger girl. You better, you know, get him." Or he ain't that bad. If he ain't, Ooh. if he ain't beating you, then don't worry about it. You know, if he got a good job, then he can do X, Y, and Z. Twenty twenty one. You got sisters talking like that. Well, I mean, they're getting that from the older generation. The older generation, you ah. know. Um, so you have these women who are, if you, if you have a good job, you're an educated man, especially if you don't have any kids. Oh, you know, and I mentioned that on, on Fox Soul when we were talking, it's like, women are just like here, Hey, hi, it, you know, and they're doing the pursuing. Um, and one of the hosts was saying that he doesn't like that. He would rather, uh, be the aggressor versus the woman because wow. he feels like, okay, well, if you've given it up to me, well, who else are you? But there are a lot of men who want to take the easy route. They don't want to pursue. Well, I, I want to give a plug to that. Like last week, she she killed it on Fox Soul. She was on the Mike and uh, Mike and Donnie show, and uh, of course, she had a, a, a expert panel. But man, she rocked it, and that that segment came up. So, guys, you can go to uh, foxsoul.tv if you want to check up. Uh, click on the episode, man. Mike and Donnie. Uh, when, when did it come on? It came on. What day was that? What, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was like a Wednesday, on a yeah. Wednesday. You know, so just, last week Wednesday. Just check it out, man. And she was on the panel. And I mean, that's really what keyed me on. I said, man, I got to have her on 
this show. It's amazing. Even you know? though I've known him forever. I, yeah, but you know, I, I <laughs> you have no idea how much you discover about a person when the circles start connecting. Unreal, unreal. All right. So uh, again, if you want to talk about being happy and single now. I mean, I like to hear a call if you're happy and single. And yeah, if somebody's just like, hey, this is all BS. This single life sucks. You can call 2323-815-4204. All good. You know, if not, we just going to chop it up and continue to talk. All right, shouts out to uh, Mike and Donnie. That is the title of their show. I don't want to say chop it up. <laughs> Here's one. So you have a, a, another site that talks about financing being single. Yeah, I mean, you talk about everything from uh, financial to talk about that website. So with uh, the single one, singlewomansagenda.com um, that everybody can go to and, and glitz. Singlewomansagenda.com, yes. guys. Yes, no apostrophe. Right. Just the singlewomansagenda.com. So, so what I'm looking here, I and mean, we were talking about single for ownership, for mindset. Well, let's talk about ownership. What are we talking about here for single women and ownership? What Specifically, are we talking about? we're talking about home buying. Okay. Because there are a lot of women, especially in that Gen X age group, who were told that, well, you had to have a husband. Mm -hmm. And even the banks or whomever else usually ask you to. Uh, if you have a husband, well, is there someone else that you're going to be, that's going to be on the loan with you and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And just the money. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm a single person who had to have multiple side hustles and a full-time job. Okay, hold that thought. We got a call. Okay. Because I should want, I pick it up? Yeah, you should. Okay. Because, <laughs> because you, you are my guest. Hey, welcome to Mentorship Moments. Each one teach uh, teach one. I'm your host CJ. Got my guest, the Urban Spinster. What's your name? My name is Pepper. Pepper, that's a hey, great Pepper. name. How you doing? I am well. How are you? Oh, I can't <laughs> complain. So I hope you're enjoying the show. What side of the aisle are you on with this single life? Well, I am single, but I am a person who believes in the dating site. So I love Sadia, but I disagree with her about the dating okay. site. Okay, let's debate. So I just wanted to debate. make a comment about that. Go for it. We ready. So um, uh, I, I like the, the dating sites. It's a lot of work. Um, but I, I disagree with Sadia in that I think you, you need to know what you want. And what you are are looking for, you have to use a, a lot of discernment because I think there are decent people out there. Um, I believe that if you want a relationship, you have to look for it. I think the difference is you don't become frantic about it. Uh, mm. I love that. I love that you pointed out Sadia's confidence, and you need to be a, a, a confident person. When you're dating, I love you talking about your wife's confidence. I think that is extremely important. And okay. knowing what you want in a relationship is important. So, well, number one. Number two, it's not, not you know, having this, this idea of what you want, a list of things, but not being a, a hardcore person where you're inflexible uh, with, with your list. I think that's the other thing that we that women should look into. Uh, the dating sites provide an opportunity for me to expand, an opportunity to uh, meet other people, to meet other other men. Well, well, uh, let me have you let me have you hold that thought. I, I, I don't want to. Uh, let me just let me have you hold that thought just for a minute because I want Sider to sure. re to, to respond and then because I because this is good. I love disagreements. You know, I love differences of opinion. <laughs> So, so, well, we've so, had this we've conversation. Had... I know Pepper. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, go, I want to hear. You, all right, go for it. So, you know. No, so no, no. But, yeah, so Pepper knows I, I, I cannot stand dating sites. But right. I've right. also never been married, and I think I've been single a lot longer. So I may just be like, okay, I'm over it. Okay, <laughs> you know, okay. Where with Pepper, I think it's, you know, it's still fun and fresh and, hey, I am looking to meet someone. So let me, you know, go out and, and kind of put myself out there. Okay. Whereas I'm at the point where I'm like, find me if you feel like it, you know? Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. You know, and it's Pepper Stone because I, I used to give this advice, you know, I wasn't looking for relationships, you know, uh, and, and when I met Eva, day two of college on a Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. That's 8.30 a.m. That's when I... Uh, met my wife and I was like, that's it. I was not. My goal was just, just to, I'm sorry. I was, I was about to, I'm in college, just school days. I'm about to mow it all out. Right. And then I met her and that was it. So I, I, I just, you know, what is the, how do I want to say this? How do I don't want to say this. Uh, just say it. 
I, you know, I, I, I'm trying to say it right. I never want to say things, never say say things wrong. So I'm, you know, okay. so that my goal was just to like, just mow them down one by one and it, it, it stopped. So the advice I would give, okay, I, I get I know exactly what I'm to say. The advice I would give in exact words to young people looking for relationships is, uh, and even older people that are frustrated is, stop looking for relationships and then they'll fall into your lap. That was my philosophy. What do you guys think about that? I'm curious. I mean, that's how I am now. But there was a time where, like I was sharing with you earlier, um, I did have a little bit of that desperation because I was not used to being single for any length of time. Mm -hmm. If I was seeing a guy and he started getting on my nerves and he started tripping a little bit, I already had somebody else that I was about to talk to. So it's like, you're done. God. Next. You're <laughs> worse than the dude. Pepper, was you rolling like that? No. <laughs> she goes. I, but see, I was a, I am a recovering people pleaser too. So oh, I, I, me too. I, I mean, it's, uh, and, and Sadia nailed it when she talked about um, the, the, the problems with people pleasing and not seeing yourself in the relate and, and not letting a lot, letting the other person see themselves and no accountability. But I, I, I think sometimes, and especially black women, and, and I get it, mm. we can, we can be very open and then we can become very, very hard. Ooh, so if you yes, don't Lord. have this, you don't have that. So the way I, the, I'm dating, the way I'm dating today is from the inside out. I do have things that I like. You need to be smart. You need to be athletic. You need to be kind. Mm. And then there's these other things that you need to have that, what, that goes without saying, honesty and loyal, you know, that kind of stuff. That goes without saying. But those those things are important to me in terms of, 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 of interacting. Um, and so, but I don't want to, I, I, I want to have this physical, obviously physical attraction is important, Yes. but there are certain things you can fix and certain things you can't fix. Can you fix the heart? That's hard to mm. fix. Um, mm. but you know, somebody's shoes or nails <laughs> or whatever, that kind of stuff you can, you can kind of fix and, and, and work on that. So Pepper, Pepper, I, you, you I've know, got a different approach dating i don't want to be a hard ass oh i don't know if i should say that okay. oh you know what it's okay no 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 I, I like to keep it real i'm not much of a cousin until you piss me off but you know if you if you if you slip one out like a like an airful fart it's okay all right, right okay. all right but I, I i and i think a lot of black women um become very hard and bitter i'm so glad that you and sadia talked about that that too they become and i i am not that girl i don't want to be that girl but i don't want to be the doormat i don't want to be easy and i don't want to be this people pleaser anymore i want to celebrate my value and bring that with me to the to the table and knowing what you want um is extremely important with some flexibility for the other person wow. um i give i want to give people the benefit of doubt but not to the point where they take advantage of you so those are that's why i respect body i love urban spencer it oh, is a bomb me too but i disagree with my sister on the on the dating site tip and dating so we can agree to disagree well and, i love your show too by the way you guys are doing great oh man thank you so much man thank it's like a, calling, a, a thank you for calling it's a dream come true you got any any other problems with your girl sadia <laughs> we can straighten it out right now all right <laughs> oh, no. all right you guys carry on i will I'll keep watching and listening. It's a good show. Thank right. you. Thank you. Tell a friend. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Awesome, awesome. Man, I, I, I love Deep Comp. And you know what? It's okay to have a difference of opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm listening through to her and, and yours, and there's common ground. And she yeah. sounds like a confident person that actually likes the dating sites and forgive me i'm not trying to trash dating sites you know i i know some, some guys that are pretty that are in it but maybe some are in it for the wrong reasons and there are some real uh, uh, matches that have been made on these websites mm -hmm. but i kind of like where you're going because listen i have two daughters that are very confident you know and i appreciate that about it and i would rather hear from a person like you that's not bitter about men you know, and they got their mom too. I haven't made my wife bitter yet, you know, so, you know, and they're grown now, so it's too late. <laughs> they already love their dad. <laughs> you know, uh, a, a level of confidence and self-respect and self-dignity, you know, that's important for young women and old women. So, you know, what do you think about that? Definitely the confidence is key because of the societal pressures. You can lose that confidence. 
Oh, we got another call. We, we got another call. Hey, oh, my God. Popping. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're on Mentorship Moments. Each one, teach one with your boy, CJ. Cleon, CJ, Joseph. How you doing today? Pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, <laughs> you're in trouble now. We got a man. We got a man. It's on, it's on. Man, thank you for backing me up, man, because there's way too many. I got two cats down here in the studio that are female. I got two females. Oh, man, I got my wife looking. I got way. I need backup, bro. All yes, right. I'm glad you called. How you doing? What's your name, brother? This is a quill. Oh, man, a quill, brother, a quill. How you doing, my man? Pretty good, pretty good, man. Love the show. Oh Love man, the show. man, thank you, my brother. I really appreciate you following, man. Speak on it, man. Let's let's talk about that single life, man. You know, I it sounds like that's about beyond your days, but sounds like you got. <laughs> you trying to say? You trying to say something? You know, talk to no. me. <laughs> You know, I got my queen over here that I adore and I love, man. Yeah. But I wanted to chime in on what I think is happening, and I wanted to get feedback from you guys. Okay. As far as single, beautiful, amazing black women, mm. what I see, even when I was single years, years ago, is these amazing women would choose like guys that wasn't good for them. Oh, bruh. And let me let, let me let me were... let me chime in on that. So you you got this fine this, this fine and you know back in the day man how you see and they would just find the just the rugginish, thugginish, pants sagginish, <laughs> booty butt cheek out in this Jerry Curl having his pimple popping <laughs> dude. <laughs> and you're like, "What?" <laughs> One got five years. <laughs> yeah. can take you, three guys can take you from 25 to 40. Three guys. Yeah. Depending <sighs> on how long you gave that guy. That's called that's so, called mileage, my brother. Woman, you know, when a lot of women, these amazing women, is running out of time when it comes to dating, because most people think they should date one guy at a time. This is the way most of us are are, are taught. Mm -hmm. Then at a certain point, you say, you know what? I just give up. Wow. And there's a lot of amazing men out here. But if you are addicted to the bad ones, and then you say, okay, I quit. If I can't have that, <laughs> right. then if I quit, then I don't understand why women quit before they try stuff? So it's like if I was if I was dating and all I liked was strippers. <laughs> Whoa. Right? It's like if, unless I can have a stripper, I'm not gonna go for anything else. Well, first so of I all, I just wanted to see are, are 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 these amazing women not giving a different type of guy? Well, a let's chance. let's let's break this up in a couple. Let's break this up in a time warp because. Okay. There's always been a stage, you know, and you know, and I and, and I know growing up because there was an is there an attraction? Is it true to the thing of the, the attraction of a bad, bad boy? boy? Talk about that. Um, and, and stay on a quill. Be, I'll, I, I have okay. to speak for me specifically. <clears throat> the, the bad boy is who like me. Okay. okay. I didn't go after the crit, the blood, <laughs> right. you know, whatever. Even though I was growing up in South Central, of course, yeah, that was what was was happening in in the 80s especially but they always liked me and because of the people pleasing thing it's like okay well i'm gonna like who likes me let me see wow. you know what's going on here because the guys who were the athletes or the the um the scouts were looking at them for college whatever that that's not who talked to me mm. the thugs are who I, talked to me. and i think that goes to a quill your point I think we don't know. A lot of these girls were good girls, but they were just yeah. as as insecure. I'm gonna tell you something, man. I went I went to I went to Poly, you know, and, and I remember personal training. Uh, so did I. Uh, yeah, that's right, Jackrabbits. That that <laughs> went. Uh, I, I remember a girl that I was training as a client way years later, and she said, she said back in the day, Cleon, I had the biggest crush. You know, you and your brother Dion was the finest thing. And I'm like, wait a minute. I, everybody was calling me Gumby in high school. <laughs> You know, man, you was dating football players such and such, you know, you know, you know, Willie Buffbutt, whatever, you know. <laughs> and you know what she said? 
she said I was too shy to talk to you because you, you were like a really good dude. Can you relate to that, Aquil? Man, I totally can relate to that. It was just women that were drop-dead gorgeous that you didn't know they had the same insecurities that mm -hmm. we had. Yeah. Wow, wow. And, and, these, and these guys that were quote-unquote the bad boys, they had the rhythm, they had the uh, 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 approach, that necessarily guys like us didn't necessarily have. And they didn't take no for an and, answer either. And that, they didn't have anything yeah. to lose, you know. And as you get older, right. uh, I think back to I've always had my own place. When I moved out of my parents' house, I had my own apartment. And I went from my own apartment, like two apartments, to home owning. And there was never a time that one some guy I was dating needed a place to stay. Man, that's so this trifling, but so true. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time uh, that I've been on my own in my own space. I have, well, first of all, I'm not dating anybody, but that I wasn't dating anybody who uh, fell on hard times or was uh, bad with money, mishandled, didn't mm. save. And that's how they found themselves in these situations. And I'll be like, oh, well, I guess, you know, we together. I guess you, I should mm -hmm. let you come stay with me. But I was hiding it because I really didn't want him to stay there. Like, don't answer the wow. phone because my mama called. You, know? <laughs> you were still. <laughs> I was still, you know, in that mindset. Right. But the, the bad boys have nothing to lose. And they see you as, oh, well, you know, she got a job. She got a car. She don't have no kids. Let me see what's up with her. You know, so. Now, let, let me. That happens I, I like what you're saying because now I'm going to take a different spin, guys. At Quills, I, I, and I, I wonder okay. if you ever thought about this now. Now that we're bringing this out of the uh, uh, Pandora's is out the box, right? To the, right. Bad, to the bad guy that we thought that was winning. Do you think were they preying on the weak? Or their life was so messed up, they needed to attach something to something that was good. What do you think looking back at it now? I, I think everybody on planet Earth pretty much want the same thing. Mm. And a lot of these women that were so such eye candy, right, everybody wanted it, you know. And I don't think at that time, these women, these girls, when we were back in the day, knew how amazing they were. Well, let me ask you this. In your, in... Because we would always talk about it. We would always talk about, oh, my God, look at her walk, look at her talk, she, her hair is beautiful. I mean, all of these things. Yeah, yeah, but... man. I had a lot of tired nights myself thinking about that. I, I, <laughs> but see, y'all wanted the, the big booty, the big boobs, and, you know, all of that. Y'all didn't want the smart girl who was cute and kept her hair done and had a two-parent household. Y'all wanted the freaks. Y'all wanted the... <laughs> well, no, now, the I'll admit, there's only, there's only one freak I wanted, but... <laughs> Most ninety percent of the time, I wanted the I wanted the, the the right girl. I was always looking for Miss uh, Miss Miss Olive Oil, Miss uh, uh, Marianne from Gilly. I was looking for you know uh, those type of just clean. But it, but there was a couple of like yeah, I was like okay yeah, let me see if I can put my thug yeah. hat on. And I wasn't very good at that. I mean, it, was, it, it it was pretty embarrassing. So let me ask you this, a quill from a man's perspective, you know. And I really love love how this is where this is going. If somebody had a mentor like who is strong and single and not bitter, like uh, uh, the urban spinster here. Would you think that would be a positive in your, your eyes? I think it would. I think it would. To, to, just, to just help bring balance to, to that space. Yes. Right? Um, you need role models. You need mentors to guide you through. Because if you don't have that mentor, right, you can literally get depressed. You can get a you know down on yourself or whatever. But by having someone like uh, her to sort of guide you through and help you find yourself in that space, I think you have a greater chance of rising up. Uh, 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 not to say you're down, but you have a greater chance of finding that balance 
in that space for yourself. Well, I think you said the best thing here, balance, because there's no right or there there is right, there's wrong, there's evil, there's good. But when you find balance, balance gives you options, my man. Hey, Aquil, I want to thank you so much for calling. This is great because it leads me into the next few questions. Brother, thank you so much for calling, all right? Thank you, guys. I enjoyed the show and I'm hanging up, keep listening. I've been like trying to get through, I'm panicking on the phone. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Well, I gotta talk to these people, amazing people. So we wanna thank you guys for just putting on an amazing show and I can't wait to uh, uh, see some in the future. Man, thank you. Tell a friend, man, we gonna grow this thing big, man. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Bye. All right, bye. So this, he said something that was pretty interesting that leads me right into where we're going. I find, and you and you tell me if you agree, that when you're single, when you're married and going through it, when you're depressed, one of the remedies is getting busy in the other things. And we were talking about uh, uh, the singlewomanagenda.com, and you were talking about ownership, filling yeah. your life with ownership, but there are other subjects, mindset, money. I mean, filling yourself with missions of finance. Tell me about that, what you do with that. Well, I wouldn't say it was a mission per se versus a necessity okay. because I'm an only child. So that probably helps <laughs> that, I, you okay. Know, okay. that I can entertain myself and I don't need a whole bunch of that explains extra, it. That explains it. Okay. You know, I'm fine being in my own company because I had my whole life to enjoy who I was, you know, to a certain extent. Of course, you have those pressures and you get those moments where you're like, I really want to go to a concert with someone or, you know, I'd, I'd like to take a walk on a beach with somebody or, or what have you. But with the money, I, with money, of course, comes more opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I always knew I wanted to own my own home. I didn't want to rent. And there's nothing wrong with renting because home ownership, another level of responsibility. You know, you, it's on, everything is on you. Oh, trust me. I and know. with you being a, a single woman, you have to think about people trying to take advantage of you. So before uh, Akil called, we were talking about all the side hustles and, and all the things that I had to do to be able to afford a certain lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So that's why I kind of get like, eh, you know, with the social media and Instagram, because all they want to promote is the, the highlight reel in the party. And not the grind. Oh, man. The grind <laughs> the grind, or the grit, as we say, as I'm right. studying in college right now, the grit is it ain't no joke. Right. But it's worth it because you've done it on your own. And even when you do have a partner, should you decide to, to get married in the future, you bring something to the table. You bring all that experience and that knowledge so that you both can thrive together. Whereas that they're not depending on you. You're not depending on them. You want to become a whole person by yourself first, because if you're relying on someone else for your happiness, that's not fair to them. And I know you're not um, like actively looking, but you said something that pinged that, uh, now something that I fortunately had because I had an incredible woman that I say to this day, grew me to a degree, you know? I, I was, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. One day, Evil, I have the confidence to get on the chair. I was unemployed for a little bit and I fell into that that weak brother zone where I was, I was becoming trifling. You know, I, you know, I had a t-shirt with an iron on. I remember going to her house, my restaurant closed down and everything. And I was in between jobs for the first time in my life. I had to look for a job outside of the family business. And my wife was cool. She had her own place, right? Paying her own mortgage. And, you know, at the time, you know, we were still dating. And one day I just, I, w I was becoming that brother. I was depressed and I felt like, let me just, I don't want to hang out at home with my parents because I'm a grown ass man home with my parents. So I'm just going <laughs> to kick it at my girl's house. Right? <laughs> so like that's different. That, you know, so I was, I was trifling, right? I was becoming <laughs> trifling. So, at, so there was one day I was like sleeping on the couch and my wife, my wife who was my girlfriend at the time, we weren't even engaged, had enough. I woke up with a job application on my chest. And one was to be like a, a fragrance model. Thank you, baby, for, you know, seeing how sex I am. <laughs> and one was working over the counter in, in the mall where she worked. She was fed up and she was like, hey, you need to you, do something. You, need to do something. <laughs> you know, well, since I wasn't working in the mall, I ended up being a law enforcement officer, which is OK. <laughs> you know, I was a model law enforcement officer, you know, but that's the kind of woman that I was dealing with. And I loved her enough to change and be that strong. See, that's woman. the key. You loved her enough to change. We cannot change you. Wow. And that's what, because we're told that, girl, you can fix him up. Girl, you, if he doesn't want to do it and he doesn't see the value enough in you and your relationship to make whatever the change 
that's necessary to be made, he ain't going to make it. So you're not, here's what I'm gathering. You tell me if I'm wrong. And I, because I want to get into uh, the, uh, the website a little more. You're not, it's not like you're like lower. You're not even looking to lower or raise your standards. It sounds to me that you're looking to match the strength. And with that, with, with the strength comes the friendship. Is that what a, is that what we're saying? Well, too, I mean, I would say I know what I, my deal breakers are okay. at this point. And I'm not willing to, you know, Pepper may say that's me being inflexible, but <laughs> I've dated enough. I right. mean, you know, Pepper's been married before. I've never been married. So I've been out here a long time. Long time. <laughs> In the streets, <laughs> yeah. I've been a long time. So I'm like, nah. Um, because I didn't follow those instincts before. So now I know me enough to say, okay, when I see someone who's emotionally unavailable, mm-hmm. who will pull you in and, and Pepper actually taught me about love bombing and, and narcissism, be, narcissists, because what they're doing I'm going to do a show on narcissism, guys. Yeah, I can't wait. To. I can't wait. You have to. But the love bombing is they meet you, they're all over you. You know, they're calling, they're going out, they're gifting or whatever that thing is to get you hooked in Mm -hmm. emotionally. And then when they're done with whatever their, their need was that they, they got met and it doesn't have to necessarily be sex. It could be, you know, anything to be just attention, right? Attention. Yeah. They're done with you. And then you're over here like, well, what, what's, you know, (laughs) that's the ghosting, you know, they're calling, but then when the date is supposed to happen, they're standing you up, you know, all those kind of things. So I know for me, when someone is emotionally unavailable, when they are already telling me from the, the get go, just one of my guy friends, he became my friend because I already knew it wasn't going to work from day one. Right. I was like, oh, no, right, <laughs> you, right. You, you don't have the kind of time. It's like, well, let's go out. But OK, I'm only free on this date, on this month, and he was, you know, having a calendar. I was like, oh, no, this ain't going nowhere. Wow. <laughs> Put you on the calendar. Yeah. Oh, wow. I had to be on the calendar. Ooh. Ooh. I was like, mm, no, no. But in getting to know him, cool, brother, just not for me right. as far as a, a romantic relationship. But I found out also what his baggage was. Mm-hmm. And that's why he keeps himself busy so he doesn't have to engage too much and get emotionally caught up because he's said out of his own mouth that he has an issue saying no to beautiful women. Ah, okay. And so he had been married in the past, didn't go well. And he kind of allowed this woman to just kind of lead him around by the nose. So now that's his defense mechanism, even though he wasn't even aware of it. Right. Right. He's like, okay, let me just stay busy. And then I can only fit you in here or here. That's not going to work for me. Wow. So he, so he's doing it wrong to where his was a mechanism, but yeah. yours is actually like, I'm a whole person. See, I see two different things. Yeah. He's still, we didn't say his name, right? No. So he's still, <laughs> he's still toxic because I, I don't want to do no jujitsu today. And he's still, he's still toxic. You're not toxic. And this is where I want, when I, I really hope, I'm, and my daughter watches, my daughters watch a lot of my shows and I, I really want them to watch this one because you've got, you've got your shit together, you know? And I wouldn't say, you know, cause he probably watched them too, but I, I wouldn't <laughs> right. say he was, he was toxic, but you know, if that's what you feel like you need to do. Well, you need to help. Until you can say, okay, you know what? I acknowledge this is my issue. So that, but we've argued about it. He's like, what? I'm not emotionally unavailable. Dude. Yes. Yes, you are. And I see where it came from because we got to be friends and you know, he became more open, but I know that that doesn't work for me. Guys. I want you guys to go to uh, two places. Uh, first of all, Instagram, give your Instagram. I want to make sure we get that out there. I am on all social media at urban spinster XO. That is urban spinster XO Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, but make sure you visit the website, thesinglewomansagenda.com. Again, that's thesinglewomansagenda.com because I have a free gift for everyone watching when you go to that website. And I'm telling you, it's more than just if uh, the sister girl get together, snap, 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 I hate men and whatever. whatnot. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that. I, I went through the site. I'm impressed. We're, she's talking about the single woman's agenda for ownership, for mindset, for uh, relationships, for lifestyle, uh, for money. So I think the, these are all the strong suits that she's tied together. So when that man, when, when I, I can't wait to see the dude that, 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 that you snag or he snags you, <laughs> that guy's going to look like Billy D. Williams. Some of y'all, half of y'all don't even know who Billy D. Williams is. Y'all don't know. 
Jim Brown, y'all don't know who that. You gotta come a little, <laughs> little, little How about more, more, more chestnut? No, that's a little, still a little, that's still a little hard no, time. That's, that's, that's 90s. Who, who, who's the relevant? Yeah. Who's the dude now? Uh, who, who's the dude? I'm the dude, God Michael, damn. Michael no, no. Ealy? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a little out there. No, I'm just playing. Oh, no, no. We're just having a good time, you know. So please uh, go to this site because I, I really, it really is about uh, uh, uplifting. And, uh, man, I hope there are some young women and men watching this. It's about, because it's a human experience. Self-worth is a human experience. Uh, again, guys, go to foxsoul.tv. If you want to check out the episode, uh, what was the title of your episode? I can't Mine remember. was um, Things You Wished Your Parents Had Taught You. Thing, and yes, and it comes out there. Hey, listen, your boy was on yesterday. Hopefully, you guys, you saw that one. It was about finding your purpose, man. And that was it, a good it, topic. It, it was a good topic, and it's nice to be amongst uh, 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 other credible people talking about things. So definitely go check out each episode. You know, I was, of course, I was saying you guys are leaks who are in the fan club. Look. The callers, thank you for calling. Keep calling. Keep spreading the message of mentorship moments each one to you. This is a wellness show, yep. but it, there's a big circumference. It's not about all my muscles and push-ups and sit-ups. Man, y'all y'all would have left my show a long time ago if I was just talking about that. You know, self-control, self-confidence brings you back to the gym and work out. You know, we got to put the uh, mitt wraps yes. back on and box again, <laughs> but it's all this quarantine and boo crap, you know? So, um any any parting words, any other, uh, events that you have going right now, uh, any place you want to guide guide people to, man, the stage is yours. You know, you, we're going to sure. be seeing uh, Miss Sanders more often in the I studio so. here. Oh, no, no, you. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I I think I need a partner right about now. So, uh, mm, we're going to be talking. All right. Anything else you'd like to say to Ron? Any parting words of, uh, of, 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 of inspiration? I, I like to leave with that. Well, again, with Urban Spinster, we are celebrating single. And although I'm the. The face of the brand right now, Urban Spencer is a brand and not just myself, Sadia Sanders. So I want to well, encourage Where did Urban Spencer come from? What does that just, mean? Well, oh, let me explain what a spinster is. Thank so you. a yes. spinster is a woman, that's a term from the early 1800s, and she can only support herself financially by spinning thread and yarn and selling those items mm. in the marketplace, as it were. Because if you weren't married, you had to fend for yourself. No husband meant no financial stability. So, so as deep. time went on, the spinster was associated with someone who was not married past a certain age. So you see in the movie, she's got, the, she's the cat lady with the glasses. She's the librarian. She's unattractive. She's, you know, homely. And urban spinster to me is someone who's confident, thriving, even in this single time. It's not a sad time. You may not get this time again. So do your work, do your self reflection. If you want to buy that house, buy it. She just she just flipped it. Don't won't, won't black folks do it? Won't we do that? We will flip a rap song and make it into the best gospel song. I'm like, yeah. I want to thank you for being on the show, and uh, we, you'll be seeing her again, uh, guaranteed. Uh, this is one of the people that I admire. Uh, I bring nothing but credibility. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, I believe we have a Valentine's Day story that I want to talk to you about, hopefully. Uh, I will see you in two. We are the Village Mentorship Moments. Each one teach one.